Senores, this is a jade figurine made centuries ago. It could have only been found in an important burial site. Can you tell us about it? Why wasn't I told last night when they came? We didn't know ourselves. I thought you said they were on the other side of the village. What's going on? They say the looters are led by a green. Harvey Wester. He used to be an archaeologist, you see. A month ago, he apparently figured out where side U was. He showed up at the village then with some men. And they've been helping him? Well, they refused to at first. They know the temple should be protected. Why didn't they tell us? Westerman threatened them. He forced them to work and warned them not to tell anyone about the temples. Especially archaeologists. Don Esteban, would you lead us to the lost city? <laughs> Yes, we will. Tomorrow morning. Good. Much tomorrow. They'll be calling the Federales now. But not before morning. We can get a lot of digging done before then. We'll haul out everything through the cenote tomorrow night. After the guards and tourists have left Tulum. so hot at tap dancing. How did you lose your leg? It's cancer, bone cancer, about five years ago. Aren't you angry? You know, I never really was. I was scared. And I was hell-bent on beating the cancer. I'd be angry and depressed. But I really feel lucky to still be alive and do all the things I can do. It's amazing. I don't know what to say. Hey, you don't have to say anything. We have a big cave dive tomorrow. Yeah. Can you play that song again? Okay, but a duet this time. Did Westerman do this? No, the Maya did it, to clear the land. They cut down most of the plants, let them dry, and then they will burn them. When the rains come, in summer, they will plant corn and other vegetables. The fields called la milpa. After four or five years, the nutrients in the soil get used up. And when the soil is used up? They slash and burn another field. I guess if you have enough land. One thing we can figure out is how so many Maya could live here in ancient times. They use this kind of agriculture, but they must have had other methods too.
keep cutting down their homes. Seems like a safe home here, on the pond. It's called cenote. Under the topsoil in this area, there's a layer of limestone. In some places, water runs under the limestone and wears it away enough that it collapses, like here. These cenotes are like natural wells. Couldn't raise her. Westerman called last night. We have to get the beacon fire going because we are taking everything out tonight. Everything? Everything they can dig up and down. What? Westerman says we can all retire on what we get out tonight. <laughs> yeah, on his share, maybe. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, what's that? Nothing. Maybe some of these manatees. Oh, don't be so jumpy. Quiet now. The ruins are just ahead. We go in only if Westerman and his folks are not there. We're not taking any chances, understood? No heroes here. Let's go. Oh, 
Okay. Tež by nám. Nemáte ho. Ja bo? Ja bo. Voj tu pátač miahe. Voj tu miahe. Voj tu miahe. Voj tu miahe. The looters knew we were coming. Westerman had the Maya working all night. He loaded them with artifacts and went with them down this path. What's this woman doing here? She said she was a the cook. They made her stay out here and cook for the looters. See, very bad man. So what do we do now? I'm trying to decide whether to laugh or to cry. Westerman may have beat us here, but look what he led us to. Hey, you guys, look! Woo! Well, it looks like Westerman and his men just cleared this off. Why didn't they take this snake head? They can only carry so much. They left this behind. The stuff they did take must have been incredible. Douglas, Kiche on the second voyage of the Mimi. Tropical forests like the ones at Palenque are really fantastic places, but they're disappearing fast. Now I've come all the way to Costa Rica and Central America to see another tropical forest. Costa Rica is a small country about 500 miles southeast of Mexico. It used to be covered with tropical forest, but now a lot of it has been cut down for lumber and to make pasture for farm animals. Cutting down so much jungle around the world hurts all of us. Tropical forests are home to thousands of species of plants and animals that have never been studied and exist nowhere else. They could be the source of new knowledge about the earth, or new foods or medicines, maybe even cures for cancer. Also, the great rainforests near the equator affect the climate and the atmosphere of the whole world. Now. A hundred acres of tropical forest get destroyed every minute. At that rate, we lose an area of forest the size of Kansas in just one year. Fortunately, there are still some big areas of tropical forest in Costa Rica. And the one I came to is high up in the mountains. In fact, its name, Monte Verde, means Green Mountain. I've come to visit a woman who is helping to protect tropical forests by learning more about how they grow and survive. Her name is Nalini Nedkarni. She's a tropical biologist who's borrowed mountain climbing techniques to do her research, high up in the canopy or treetops of the rainforest. Nalini lives with her husband, who is also a tropical biologist, in a cabin high on a mountaintop. Before we set out for the day's work, she told me a little about what she does. Um, we started a project here a little while ago, um, a couple years ago actually, to study um, the epiphytes, the plants that grow up in the canopy of the tropical rainforest mm -hmm. here in Monteverde, where even as the trees around here, you can see, there are lots and lots of these plants growing up there. Epiphyte? Epiphytes is really a very general name for any plant that grows on another plant. Mm -hmm. We're trying to understand how they interact with other parts of the forest. Because in tropical rainforests especially, the interactions between plants and animals and plants and other plants and animals and the soil are really complicated and really important. And not that much is known about them. Mm -hmm. And so this project is part of trying to understand some of the complex interactions. And I've chosen to look at those epiphytes, those plants growing in the trees. Learning more about those relationships may help save rainforests that are damaged by humans. I was looking forward to helping Nalini, but she had a surprise for me. She said that the best way to understand what she does would be for me to climb up in a tree with her. And off we go. Wow. 
And I thought this tree would be a super one for climbing, especially for your first time. <laughs> OK. But it might be pretty hard, because it's pretty high. You can see how tall it is. It's an awful big tree. Yeah, it is big. Yeah, it's nice and tall. It's got lots of big, good branches. I think this is the one for us, Carla. What kind of tree is this? Um, this is a really interesting kind of tree. It's called a strangler fig. And what happens is it starts its life up in a tree on a branch. And then it grows its roots down until it's, and the roots follow the trunk all the way down to the ground. When the roots of that plant get down to the ground, it starts growing faster and faster and bigger and bigger until finally that plant itself, the fig itself, starts growing bigger than the tree it started on. And pretty soon, all that's left of this whole tree is the strangler itself. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? <laughs> it's almost scary to look at them. <laughs> and so this tree is actually a strangler, strangler fig, and the original tree, there's nothing of it left. Wow. But now we have the strangler fig with all these other plants. They're really neat. OK, so what we can do is start rigging a tree. I think I'm going to try to put my line up there. And we're going to use this invention. This gets a line up the tree to begin with. This is a master caster. Mm -hmm. And you can see what it is. It's, it's just a slingshot. And we put a line through it, like this. Mm -hmm. And because sometimes I miss, even when <coughs> I shoot, even though I've done this for a long time, um, if I miss or if I have to bring back the line, then I can just reel it back very easily. And it okay. doesn't take any time to rig it. So you can hold the master caster for a second. And I use a fishing weight. This is about one and a half ounces. Mm -hmm. And I thread it through and tie it on. It's very good to know how to tie knots when you're in the tree climbing business. Mm -hmm. So we tie a couple of good, strong knots. Did you invent this yourself? Yeah, it's one of my inventions. <laughs> so this is just a regular fishing reel? Yeah, this is just a plain old fishing reel that you buy in a sports store. And we put it on the bottom so that when I shoot it up, and if I make a mistake, if I miss my aim, then I can just reel it up really fast. Now, you could help me, Carla, actually. If you don't see that bale, that metal part? If you yeah, can lift that here. over very slowly so that the line is free. Perfect. OK? Great. OK, here we go. Oh, oh. so short. Oh, just a teeny bit. Well, even the master caster can miss sometimes. Good. Yippee! We got it! All, All right. right! OK, now comes the fun part, in which <laughs> we twingle it down. I see it. Oh, yeah. But it's on the other side. It's coming down slowly. I see the fishing line. Once the fishing line is over, a slightly heavier, stronger cord is tied to it and pulled up over the branch. There's a good firm knot. Now what we'll do is you stay here, and you're going to make sure that this string goes out freely. I'm going to go back over there and reel in the line, and that'll pull this line back over. OK. OK? OK, I've got the white cord. We're in there. This cord is strong enough to pull up the climbing rope. Nalini ties that on with the same kind of knot she used before. It's called a bowling. And here's how a bowling goes. Just go around like this and into there. So that's a great strong knot. <laughs> so when you pull it tighter, it gets tighter and tighter. Mm -hmm. OK? The rope is then hauled up over the branch. And there it is. Oh, great. Hooray. Oh, great. OK, we have us a rigged tree, Carla. Finally, one end of the climbing rope is tied off to a nearby tree. But we needed two climbing ropes. So Nalini climbed up and up through the vines and rigged a second rope for me. I couldn't quite believe that I would soon be up there myself. I was pretty scared to climb that high. But Nalini told me how everything worked, and I began to relax a little. What do I do? <laughs> OK, see these round parts? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to put your feet through that one, put your left foot through there, right? And your right foot through the other circle. OK. Perfect. OK, and hitch is... it up, just like I hitched mine up. OK. Then we're going to do a little swaddling here. So this goes all the way around, back behind. And it's going to go through that this carabiner. Good. That's perfect. Great. OK. So now you're all set. That's nice and tight. OK. Now, the next thing we use is this great invention. And what's great about this is that even though it's very simple, it works very well. 
And these are the things that really move you up the rope, and they're really what get us up there. So when we put it on, you can see these little metal teeth? Mm -hmm. they, they actually clamp into the rope, and they bite onto it. So you can feel, go ahead and feel how you can pull up on the rope like that. But you can't pull down on it, no matter how hard you pull. So we're going to be attaching this to your seat harness, pulling it down, but you won't go down unless, when you want to go down, you can put your thumb on this metal triangle, and it will go down. As soon okay. as you let your thumb go, it stops, and it will hold your whole weight. OK. OK? So stand up, and in one smooth, coordinated motion. Very good, <laughs> Carla. That's great. That's exactly right. OK. OK, now, now you're ready what? for your feet again. You're going to bend your knees and pull that up at the same time. Perfect. That's exactly right. That's right. Very good. <laughs> OK, you're not going to have any problem with this at all. OK, now your feet. That's it. And kick up with your legs. Great. Terrific. <laughs> OK, you're on your way, Carla. That's great. Listen, Carla, I'm going to go to the other rope over there. OK. okay I'll climb up at the same time. So I'll meet you up at the top. All right. All right? <laughs> Once I got the hang of it, it wasn't so scary. In fact, pretty soon I could almost forget how high I was and just enjoy where I was, as long as I didn't think too much about what was holding me up. I feel like I'm going to fall. Nope, there's no way you can fall. The no way secure. at all? Nope. Now, this is always the exciting part, because you never know what you're going to find up there. You just think, <laughs> nobody has ever been up there except monkeys and birds and plants. So you're the first human who has ever walked up there. <laughs> so what's up? <laughs> <laughs> it's really neat to see the ground from a different perspective, too. You know, suddenly you start realizing that when you're up in a tree, this is the way the birds see the world. See those bromeliads there on the side of the tree, the things that look like giant pineapples? Yep. Those are tank bromeliads. And you can see the way they're put together, especially when you see them from the top, that they're really good at collecting and holding on to rainwater. So they're sort of like little ponds, and birds come and drink water from them and actually take baths in them. And those are epiphytes, too. That's one very important group of epiphytes, the bromeliads. Wow. OK, I'm just about at the station that I'm going to get off. Kay. So I'm going to swing on over to that crotch over there uh -huh. and get on off. And you keep on climbing when I'm out of your way, OK? OK. OK, I made it safe and sound. OK. So you keep on climbing on up. OK. OK, just a couple more, and you'll be up here. Oh. My hands are starting to burn. Yeah. After a while, you get really good calluses on your hands. You can just slip up and down the rope with no problem at all. All right, here I come again. OK, now I want you to kick your legs free. Out of the leg loops? Out of the leg loops. Uh, come on in feet first, OK? Lift up your feet. Uh, That's it. Keep on pulling. Can you get your other foot up there? Uh, there you go! Uh, All right. <laughs> Excellent. I'm on a tree. That's right. How high do you think we are? We're about 30 meters high. And that's about, that's close to 100 feet. Wow. I don't believe I did it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> All by myself. Well, with some help from yeah. you. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs>